Grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. It never matters how many times you see it, how many times you face it, it always feels unnatural. It never feels right. Death is always feels wrong. Something deep inside us won't accept it. Won't believe that we we aren't going to hear that voice again. We aren't going to see that face smiling or touch that hand or experience that laugh ever again. Now the grief counselors can talk until they're blue in the face about how this is all a part of life. We must just accept it as something inevitable and natural. But we never do. Because death is not natural. Man was not made to die. Man was made to live. Mary didn't accept death. Oh, she had no doubt that her Lord, her teacher, was dead. She had witnessed the horror of it herself. Standing beside his mother, she had seen the light fade from his eyes as he hung gruesomely on that cross. She had seen them take his limp body down from the wood. She heard the horrid sound as the nails were drawn out. He was dead. Of that she had no doubt. But still, it wasn't right. She knew it wasn't right. She simply had to touch him again. But the body was gone. She ran to go tell Peter and John, big help that they were. They came, they checked it out, and they said, Yep, the body's gone. And they left her. But she remained. She didn't know what to do, where to go, to whom she should turn. She just stood there. She started to cry. And these were not the tears of someone who is simply sad. These were gut-wrenching, soul-churning, body-heaving tears of the grief. Death. doesn't only wound those it takes from us, it wounds those of us left behind. Sometimes it wounds us so deeply that we feel we ourselves might die then and there. Mary knew something of that as she saw, as she looked into the tomb. Something was different. The tomb wasn't empty anymore. There were angels there, clothed in white, one sitting where his head had been, the other sitting by the feet. And though Mary's sorrow could never shake or destroy the joy of these angels, out of concern for her they asked, Woman, why are you weeping? Now Jesus' death was such a given Mary didn't even say, because my Lord is dead. Instead, her answer was, they've taken away my Lord, and I don't know where they have laid him. Not knowing the location of that body, it was tearing her up inside. Death was horrible enough on its own, but not being able to find the body, not being able to tend to it in her last service to her Lord, she had to know where the body was. She had to touch his body one last time. If she didn't, how could she face tomorrow? How could she face the rest of her life? Mary's grief was of such tremendous magnitude that it didn't even faze her that she had just spoken with two angels. She straightens herself up. She turns around and she runs into the one who's never been far from. The one who has stood right beside her through all this grief, even though she did not recognize 
the one. He gently says to her, Woman, why are you weak? Who are you seeking? Sir, she cries, if you've carried him away, tell me where you have laid him, and I will take him away. Just tell me. And maybe it was the tears that were in her eye that morning. Or maybe it was the grief in her heart that made everything seem to move in slow motion. The world was unreal, almost a, a shadow realm. But all that changed when her eyes were open when he said one word. When he spoke her name, Mary. My sheep hear my voice, and I know them and they follow me. Although she hadn't recognized him before, at the sound of her name, Mary's heart pounded, her breath caught. She moved the hair from her face and she stared in awe, in terror, in joy, rising like a flood. Rabboni, she says, my teacher. And she lunged for Jesus and she held his feet beyond hope. Beyond her wildest dreams, he stood there, not a ghost, not a spirit, not an illusion or some kind of wishful thinking. Her, Jesus, flesh and blood, the wounds still visible, but, but transformed. Her, Jesus. And the tears came again, big walloping tears of joy. These were not the sobs of despair. These were the tears that run over the cup that is filled with joy. And it was a tender moment. But the joy was only beginning. Jesus had work for Mary to do. A mission, an embassy for her to carry out. He sent her to his apostles to give them this message. I am ascending to my Father and to your Father, to my God, and to your God. Death was not the end of him, and so it will not be the end of Mary or the disciples. Death will not be the end of you. Jesus has changed forever how we live. He's changed forever how we grieve, and he has changed forever how we die. Yes, we still feel it in our bones, how unnatural, how wrong death is. We hate it with a passion. But Jesus has made it something that we, well, that we never fear. Not ever again. For by his death and his resurrection, Jesus has wounded death itself. He has dealt it a mortal blow from which it will never. He came out of its stinking gullet, alive, and never to die again. And his promise to Mary, to the apostles, to all his baptized children, is that he will bring each and every one of us through that hole that he has punched in death to bear us then to that house that he has prepared for us with his Father. And to strengthen our faith in his resurrection victory, Jesus continues to pour into our dying bodies His life-giving body. His body that was on the tree, atoning for your sin. His body that laid in the tomb and sanctifies your grave. His body that Mary held in the garden on that first Easter day. He pours down your throat the blood that he shed to wipe out the sins of the world. And he reminds you that it is for you. He whispers in your ear each Lord's day. As death could not hold me, so will it not hold you. My child, you have baptized into my undying life. I will bring you out of death just as I came out of it, alive and never to die again. And then, 
then the celebration really begins. Alleluia! Alleluia! Christ is risen! He is risen indeed. Alleluia!